We're going to prove this theorem over here that if P and Q are distinct prime numbers, then log to the base P of Q is an irrational number. So for example, you can take 2 and 3 and you can say, for example, that log to the base 2 of 3 is irrational or any two prime numbers you like. Log to the base 7 of 11 is rational. Um, in fact, the theorem goes much beyond this. You can characterize when log to the base something of something is irrational. I'll do that in another video. Drop a comment down below if you'd love to see that. But here we're just going to prove this fact just to start off with practice, why this is an irrational number. And let's just dive right into it. So what we want to do is it's a standard math technique called proof by contradiction. So this is also an introduction to math proofs. We're going to do proof by contradiction. So let's assume for a contradiction that it is a rational number that it can be written in the form m over n where m and n are integers and n is non-zero okay so here's the proof is it's a proof by contradiction so assume that assume so typically say assume for a contradiction so assume for a contradiction that we can write this as a ratio of two integers where the denominator is non-zero okay that log to the base p of q is going to equal to m over n, where m and n are going to be, um, so in this case, we, we can say like m and n are integers, and n is non-zero. Okay, so this notation here, you know, if you haven't seen it, I'm trying to introduce you to stuff. So m and n are in z, this means z is the integers, all the negative integers, positive integers, and zero. And so m and n are here, and n is non-zero. So we're assuming the log to the base p of q is m over n. We're going to derive something absurd from this, okay? So we're going to say this is inconsistent with what we know to be true in math and in our universe, okay? So it's kind of like an alibi. If you say, for example, that someone committed a crime at 9 p.m., let's say um, John, and let's say John was with Sally at 9 p.m., well, and Sally and, and the crime was claimed to have been committed in, in, let's say, U.S., but John and Sally were in Germany or something, then, of course, um, that's absurd. Okay, so this is kind of a inconsistency we're going to derive from this. So how are we going to do this? Well, what is log to the base p of q? So always in math you get surprisingly far if you just think about what things are actually. You know, it sounds dumb, but it actually works very well. So log to the base p of q is a solution to an equation. Okay, that's where, that's where logs are defined. You're trying to solve an equation. What is the equation? The equation is that p power x is equal to q. Okay, so that's the equation. What do you have to power p by to get q? That is what we call log to the base p of q. Okay, so here we would say x is equal to log to the base p of q. Now, well, if p to the x is equal to q, um, we get some information now. Okay, so we know that we're claiming, we're assuming for a contradiction it's rational. So we know that if we take m over n, that's x, we know p to the m over n is equal to q. Okay, so let's erase this out here. So this is the theorem. Um, we'll now get something absurd. And of course, we're going to have to use the fact p and q are distinct primes because, of course, if p and q are the same, then log to the base p of p is just 1 because p power 1 is p. Okay, so, so we, we're going to have to use that at some point. So here we know that p to the m over n is going to equal to q. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, I like to, when you have rationals, I like to clear denominators. So let's power both sides by n. So if we power both sides by n, we're going to get p to the m over n power n is going to equal to q to the n. So therefore, we know that p to the m is going to equal to q to the n. Okay, so all I've done is m over n times n is m. So we've got this. So we've got two distinct powers of, you know, two powers of distinct primes are equal. So here's where we're going to use the fact they're distinct. Uh, this cannot happen. Okay, that's what we're claiming. So let's just quickly be very careful about why this cannot happen. So first off, if m and n have the same sign, right? then you're basically saying, you know, for example, if m and n are both positive, you're saying that some prime power some positive number is another prime power some positive number cannot be. Why? Because p is a factor of the left-hand side, but not a factor of the right-hand side, right? So two integers cannot be equal if they have distinct factors, okay? This has p as a factor, this is as q as a factor, they're distinct primes, they can't be equal. If m and n are negative, we can just move everything to one side, so we can then, so if m and n, so this is if m and n are positive, so I'm just going to actually write this down kind of in steps just to show you how the argument goes. So if m and n are positive, um, then this contradicts the fact that p divides those two. So, so this is going to be one. If m and n are positive, um, then p divides, then p divides, um, you know, p to the m, but p doesn't divide q to the m. N. Okay, so therefore that's a contradiction. So sometimes in math you write a contradiction with a hash. Okay, so that's one way of showing it. You know, 
you know the two numbers can't be equal because they have different factors. Um, if m and n are negative, okay, then what you can do is you can just say that, you know, you can just invert both sides, okay? So negative powers means they're not integers anymore. So you can't say, oh, one has one factor and another doesn't have that factor because they are, you know, p to the two to the minus five is one over 32, it's not an integer, but you can do a simple trick. You can just, you know, multiply both sides by p to the minus m times q to the minus n, okay? So then what we get is then, um, if p to the m is equal to q to the n, then you're going to get that um, p to the m times q to the minus n times p to the minus m is equal to q to the n times p to the minus m times q to the minus n. So all I've done is I multiplied by p to the minus m times q to the minus n on both sides, and that's therefore going to say that um, q to the minus n is going to equal to p to the minus m, okay? Or you could multiply by power both sides by negative one, and so then what you do is either way you get that now minus n and minus m are positive and you can say that two positive powers of the distinct primes are equal and do the same reasoning we just did up top to say that that cannot be. Okay, so that's the, that's the next step. And now, you know, the last step is of course if one is positive and one is negative. Okay, so if m is positive and n is negative, well then, um, you know, that's the last step we have to consider. So case three um, is m is positive and n is negative. Now, of course, the case where n is, ne n is uh, positive and m is negative is symmetrical, okay? So we can just write that in the proof, but here we're just going to get that m greater than zero, n less than zero. Well, we can then say that, okay, we had the equation that p to the m was equal to q to the n. So then if n is negative, we can bring it to the other side, okay? So we can make all the positive powers on one side. Um, so then you could get that p to the m, I mean, you can actually do this in a number of ways. Um, you know, one way of doing it, I, I mean, I'm just done it in this way. All this says is now a product of two positive powers of primes is one, which is absurd, right? Cannot be the case. Um, you know, this is going to be greater than one. Okay, so you can actually say there's an inequality, so therefore it cannot be an equality. Or you could just say that if n is negative, q to the n is less than one and p to the m is greater than one. Any number of ways of doing it. And you might ask, what about the case when one or both are zero? Well, we know the denominator can't be zero, n can't be zero. If m is zero, then we can also rule that out because then one side will be one and the other side will be something that is not one, okay? So, so you can write it out and my challenge to you, so I've tried to explain this intuitively to show you the steps and while I've done this, I've kind of talked about some steps, you know, very, um, in a very detailed way. So my challenge to you is can you make this proof as succinct as possible? You know, can you write it out in a way Maybe, you know, try to compartmentalize all the steps in one or some of the things I said, maybe to try to kind of highlight them and use them multiple times rather than a different reasoning each time. Okay, so that's my challenge to you to try to write out this proof rigorously if you're practicing with proof-based math. And if you want to drop a comment down below, I'd love to see it. I'd love to hear from you. But this is a watertight proof that log to the base P of Q is irrational. Um, and yeah, that's the video. So thank you so much for watching. I've got lots of content on my channel. I love doing proof-based math. I'm a research mathematician. I spend my time trying to solve unsolved problems in math that have been unsolved for decades. And I, I think about that, of course, those take time to solve. But the thought processes I show you in these videos are the way mathematicians think about these things. And I've received a university-wide faculty teaching award at Princeton, so I have a lot of experience teaching advanced math. I've got math for all people on my channel, basic to advanced. Whether you're in middle school, high school, college, or you want to learn like proof-based math and get into serious math thinking, there's stuff for you on my channel. So check it out. Playlists on my channel. They've got organized by themes and topics so you can see what appeals to you. And my goal, you know, before you click away, I just wanted to tell you, I'm trying to support people. I'm trying to change lives through math edu education, create infinite accessible free education at all levels of math. And I want to ultimately spread out to people who don't have internet access. So right now I'm on YouTube, but I want to diversify and by liking, supporting my channel, subscribing, and sharing with friends, family, students, classmates who are learning math, which is universal. You really helped me to achieve this goal and to help as many people as possible. So thank you so much for watching and it's all free. So thank you so much for watching. I wish you the best and I'm super excited to see you in the next video.